Good afternoon, everybody, and a hearty, hearty welcome to the final event for our Media Week 2021. We've had a very, very exciting and full week. We started out on Monday with a panel discussion and um, featuring uh, some of our graduates. Our, our moderator was the first graduate of our BA program, Kyle Joaquin, and we had other um, graduates who were um, on the panel and that was a, quite an eventful evening. Then on Tuesday, we had Ty Chavez, jo Johnston Chavez come and she did a workshop in just marketing yourself. She talked about how to create, how to produce a reel and um, market yourself more digitally. And um, that was very well attended and received. And then last night we had a presentation on the UB newspaper that students have been working on for about a month and a half. It's gonna be called um, Blueprint. And um, we have put out for all students in the university to um, please become a part of that. We're looking for writers, photographers, um, all sorts of persons to work on the news. And so we're now at the final event, which is geared towards high school students, but certainly open to everybody. And we have two professors from our very own department who are going to present this um, 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 work in this workshop to today, who are going to present in this workshop today. And so um, you already know what it's all about, so I'm not going to, going to say anything else about that. They will, will explain that. But we have used as the theme, navigating the digital landscape for this year. And we realize that this is so appropriate because we've been forced to do just that, to navigate the digital landscape. And I hope that this week has helped to prepare everybody who's attended and um, certainly with today's um, um, presentation, it will help to prepare us to be better able to navigate that landscape. Um, we have had in our department, sadly, one of our students passed away um, on Sunday. She was a second year um, media journalism major. Her name was Arielle Johnson. And what we have done is dedicated this week to her memory. And so um, we just wanted um, persons to be mindful to, um, you know, just let's all encourage each other and to just remember her and her, her legacy. Those of you who have known her, she was an excellent student and um, she would have made an outstanding journalist. And so without further ado, I'd like to um, invite Mrs. Alvino Christie, who will, will continue with the, with the day. Welcome, have a wonderful time, enjoy yourself, and thank you so, so much for coming. Hi everyone, so I am Paola Alvino Christie. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself um, for our high school students and also some of our own UB students who may not know me. I have been at, um, at UB as assistant professor of journalism since 2009, so a good long time. And um, I specialize like in the, the news writing classes and uh, media law, media theory, things like that. And what we wanted to do today, um, because this is really as a taster session for our year 11 students in the Bahamas who are at high school and who are thinking about um, going to university and maybe considering uh, UB as an option. And so we wanted to give you a little taste of what it is like at UB. Obviously, we're in a virtual world now for obvious reasons. And um, so this is kind of what the virtual world is like at UB at the moment. So you'll see a lot of um, faces on the screen in front of you. Um, many of these are UB students. And then we have our high school students. Please put the name of your school in the chat. Um, Dr. Yildrim, whom I'm, I'm about to introduce, will want to know who you are because he will be doing some interactive things, like a little, uh, some quizzes, I believe. And we'll be putting you in breakout rooms to work together, as far as I know, but he'll explain. So, um, we are looking at the theme, or the themes, of fake news and propaganda 
because uh, you, I'm sure you've been discovering as you navigate the world of social media that we're bombarded with information and we can't always know or trust that what we're getting is true or uh, accurate or you know it that, that we can trust the source of the info so um let uh, let me introduce dr emre yildirim who is the assistant professor of journalism in our department of um, journalism he was born in istanbul and came to us in the bahamas three years ago having taught at universities in istanbul and dubai He's also worked in the communications and media sector at Par Paramount Studios on the Hard Copy program, at Cambridge Cable Television, CNBC, NTV and N MSNBC, and also National Geographic magazine. So he is going to be discussing how to spot and avoid fake news. And after that, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what the difference is between fake news and propaganda. Then I'm going to call on a couple of my, um, my mass communication students who've just been learning about propaganda. So they're going to share with you what they found out about it. And then I'll do another little presentation and we're going to end with a short film, which ties into the theme of, uh, of what I wanted to talk about. Okay, so over to you, Dr. Yildirim. Thank you very much. That was a lovely introduction. And now I would like to share my screen to give you short information about fake news. Okay. Um, this is an informative presentation and at the same time it has a workshop um, which we will be doing after this one so when the epidemic started as the COVID-19 sweeped across the world it's been accompanied by a tsunami of misinformation we are not just fighting an epidemic, we are fighting an infodemic. But these are the words of Director General of World Health Organization. The problem is the fake news about COVID-19 has been spreading faster than the real news. So in this lecture, we will be looking at what is fake news, how can we spot questionable content, and what and who creates fake news. And against it, we will be introducing media literacy as a citizen responsibility. A basic definition for that is fake news is false or misleading information presented as news, usually spread out of the internet and most commonly social media. We can define five categories of fake news. Joker, scammer, politician, conspiracy theorist, and insider. Well, let's look at the Joker one. Well, in this one, a meme or joke is created to laugh and is shared. And by the time passes, it goes viral. And there is no way to track where it comes from or in what context it is produced. And then the second is scammer. Well, these are simply the people after money making. They are either trying to get details of your bank account or trying to sell their miracle remedy. And then we have the politician people trying to create a political influence can spread false information in this example this fake news is created and spread to undermine a political leader also there are cases which governments are spreading fake news as a weapon of foreign policy which happened in china and us without a base both governments accused each deliberately causing the pandemic. 
And finally, conspiracy theorists. But these fake news generators are suspicious at that level of paranoia. But there's nothing wrong with being paranoia. That's fine. However, they exploit varied people looking for quick answers. But within this fake news, um, the definition of looking for quick and simple answers is crucial. In the receiving side, if you are looking for quick and simple answers, most probably you will be targeted and exploited by fake news. And finally, we have the insider. The insider kind of fake news is the one claimed by a person who call himself or herself a doctor or a health worker, nurse. When you check names or institutions, most of the time, you see they don't exist. However, when such news are shared by a relative or someone we trust, or sometimes even by a celebrity, we tend to believe. Well, now, ways of spotting fake news. It's not just five, but I will introduce five of them to you. Uh, look for the URLs. If they're unusual, then there is something to be suspicious. If, for example, you have abcnews.com.co, that's a problem. For example, .ma, that's a problem. So watch for them or globalresearch.ca. So th this one also starts with something trustable but ends very suspicious. So check for the URL extensions. And then dissect the layout. Look for incorrect dates, grammatical errors, not making sense language or confusing style of writing, funny names sensationalist images. And then as a third step, you can dig a little bit deeper. Find out who wrote the article. Who supports this site? Do you need to register by giving your information? So that's another thing. Try a reverse image search. Well, um, this is how reverse image search is done. Google has an image search option when you post an image. It gives up a list of the sources that image is used. So you simply hold the image, drag and drop into the search box, and then it immediately pops up the list of the sources which this image is used. If the sources coming up are suspicious signs, or if you see the image is originally outdated, chances are the picture or information accompanying is fake. And number five, you can do a cross check. When you see a dramatic, alarming news item, check the other credible news sites to see if they are reporting the same incident. Well, um, there is lots of competition in um, news industry. So if somebody spots a news, within very short time, the other news channels will report the same incident. So you will be seeing the same news, the same event in many different sources. But if you see that breaking event in just one single source, then that's a question. Okay, some more hints. Check if the headline is neutral or provocative. Check how do you feel when reading? If you feel, you know, an urge to laugh, if you feel very angry, if you feel very scared, then it means that they are using emotion more than information. And check the other articles in that very same place, if they are making sense or not. Not just the 
article you're re reading, but also articles which are next to that one. Check if the author of the article wrote another article, if any author is mentioned. Check the usage of capital letters. Fake news use advertisement kind of outlay. So it tries to draw your attention. So watch how capital letters and coloring is used. Check if a stream of clicking is resulted when you get into that site. Uh, we call this clickbait. Suspicious and fake sites try to drag you into that specific space on the internet and they want to they want you to click on things so if you click one thing then there pops up a stream of images and windows check if the article passes the fact check sites well for this fact check uh, i'd like to give a trial let me first define it google search the claim with putting the word fake at the end or Google search the site with putting the word fake at the end. So here it is that. So Hubert Minnis, Corona positive, fake. Hit enter. The first thing you get is false reports circulating. And the second entry you receive is another denial. So this immediately gives you if this is real or not. Here is another one. So this one uses ABC News, which is credible, and then it goes dot com dot co slash. Put word fake behind it, hit enter, it will immediately give you. So the first search item declares it, as well as the second one and the rest. So what and who creates these fake news when defining fake news uh, we also give a list of these people who create fake news uh, so to repeat it joker scammer politician conspiracy theorist and insider well keep these groups in mind because we are going to make a workshop of it we are going to make a workshop of producing fake news so that we understand the mentality behind it. But there is another gigantic group who are both victims and generators of fake news. People. <laughs> Sorry, was that to me? No, oh, just a mistake. Okay. Well, um, there is a gigantic group of people who also create fake news, and these are people dissatisfied with system or the situation in general. Uh, they are being exploited by extremist groups. When you hear an expert or researcher talk about populism in politics and its dangers, they simply refer to this kind of exploitation, exploitation of unhappy groups. This group can also be defined as people susceptible to conspiracy mentality. Conspiracy mentality is measurable. In the process of measuring, basically the general tendency to believe in is observed. And globally, general tendency to believe in is in the middle. This means that any of us it doesn't matter how educated we are. It doesn't matter how clever we are. We can be the target. Anyone can be a believer to a conspiracy theory. For example, in India, 72% of the society believes Corona is a Chinese produced bioweapon. In US, it's 32% 32, 32 believe conspiracy theory of some sort regarding Corona. 
um, other than people intentionally or unintentionally spreading fake news, it's the algorithms running the social media. Well, an, an algorithm is an artificial intelligence program which um, places which information you are going to see and hear first in the social media. Well, the social media algorithm values the fake news more than the reliable content and moves them at the top of the results. The reason for this is because the social media is designed as an entertainment tool for people to spend time. The main purpose of the social media can be summarized as it is designed to hijack your attention. And it is designed to keep you clicking and sharing. But this makes fun content preferred and placed over the serious and hard to consume ones, such as scientific fact based information. Good news is. On social media and internet, when we only pass a limit of 60% good advice and 40% bad advice, the effect of bad advice gets canceled out in people's decision and actions. Um, I can summarize, I can explain this like that. Uh, let's say that you need to make an action, just like, shall I wash my hands? Shall I not wash my hands? But the result is, if you receive 60% good advice, it's more likely that you will be washing your hands. So that's what it means, canceling out bad actions and instead um, encouraging good actions. Conspiracy theories and fake news have an advantage over the real news. Truth is often painful and complicated. In contrast, fake news are usually in a form that is easy to understand and doesn't challenge any of our beliefs or former learnings. For example, compare how complicated it is to understand the idea of a novel virus versus the idea that COVID-19 is produced by some billionaires because they wanted to take over the world. The first one is complicated and it's even difficult to understand. Forget about you know, keeping it in mind. But the second one is so easy to understand and it stays in mind. In the process of truth versus populism and or fake news, all citizens need to be educated on two fronts, media literacy and science literacy. Today, these are not a luxury, but a necessity because increasingly the issues we deal with in the millennia are becoming more scientific than political. To name just a few, the um, disruptive technologies, climate change, and possibility of a nuclear disaster. These are all scientific problems, not political. So with that, here I conclude my presentation. Now, um, if you have any questions I would like to receive, if not, I would like to introduce you a small game practice regarding fake news. Well, in my classroom experience, usually when I say, do you have any question? Nobody talks, nobody says anything. Uh, if, <laughs> uh, people, if you have any question, just interrupt. You know, If you just press towards your space bar, then you will be audible. Or if you can raise hands, then um, I will be aware of you. But um, simply, I'm moving forward and introducing you the um, little practice. But meanwhile, if you have anything to say, I will be receiving you. Just interrupt me. And if, uh, if you want to put your question in the chat, I'll be keeping an eye on that as well. 
So um, please feel free to use the chat feature. And um, to our new high schoolers who have entered the room, please put the name of your school. Thank you, Dia, I see you've just done that. Please put the name of your school in the chat. And I'll hand back over to Dr. Ildrim. Uh, put your hand up, unmute your mic, or put your question in the chat. That would be great, thanks. Hi, good afternoon. I just wanted to say the presentation was awesome so far. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> what, what hit you most? What, what really got your attention most? I'm curious to know. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, what got my attention most was when you were saying that social media is designed so a person keeps clicking and being interested. And when you said that a lot of times, like the fake media gets more attention than what should actually be out there the person should be tuning into so i was like yeah that's the truth so that got my attention the most yeah good point hey hey guys um i just wanted to say i really did appreciate the um the presentation so far also um and i i learned something i think of myself as a as a technically savvy guy, but I never had really thought to, to see how the reverse image search worked. And I definitely had to look it up again. And so I'm glad that you pointed it out. So yeah, I appreciate that. That was pretty cool. And Dr. Yildrim, uh, Alexis Williams is asking, do you think that social media promotes or encourages fake news to be spread? At the moment, yes, it does. Um, social media has been criticized a long time, uh, spreading fake news and information and even manipulation. Uh, but the thing is, um, they claim that they don't have the responsibility of the information being shared. But COM 150 students will be very, very familiar with that. Um, if you are, um, a service provider, just like uh, BTC, you're not responsible of the content. If somebody calls you and somebody yells at you, BTC is not responsible of that. But if you are a content provider, on the other hand, you have a responsibility. Well, um, social media is a content provider, but they have been acting just as service provider probably there are laws which they can trick with that and play with that but um they have been trying to avoid this responsibility for a long time but when fake news started to spread fake treatments for covid 19 and people started dying because of that for example, in one instance, 700 people got poisoned because it was advised that if you drink pure alcohol, it will just kill all coronaviruses and make you clean. Reported 700 people died because of that. It's just a fake news. It's just one single one of them. Um, well, people got thrilled with such information and social media don't want to cancel this thrilling effect which make people share and click but now it's more regulated but still and I was also, um, and also Emre the algorithms like you mentioned uh, are also playing a part in that and I don't know if any of you have watched the social D dilemma documentary yet on Netflix but I'm thinking I'm going to show you the trailer. It's only two minutes. So after this, I'll show you the trailer for that. And it talks about exactly how social media has promoted fake news often above real news. So um, if you haven't watched that documentary, I highly advise it. Yeah. Um, I have a question. What, to what extent do you think a lack of general education um not 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 talking about media literacy specifically but i guess that kind of ties in what to what level do you think general education or lack of it 
affects what people take in as as real and fake um i don't have certain figures i'm sure there are lots of researchers about that um and um i understand that it changes from country to country um but general education definitely affects it to what level i cannot say it but if your surrounding your society is more towards believing into conspiracy theories of any kind of any subject if you see um accusing a group of people for the bad things happening in the country or in the society the more it goes up then the more open this society is for fake news that's how i would observe uh, if these people are susceptible for fake news or not There's no more questions in the chat. Yeah, silence. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, well, being interested in these fake news, um, I find out that in many high schools, there are programs, there are, there are courses which teach you how to differentiate fake news, how to sense, how to understand it. It's just like, the moment you touch fake money, it really gives you a sensation of, oh gosh, this is not real. So the moment you face with fake news, you, you, you become suspicious, you become taking the smell. And best practice for that, uh, a common practice for that is producing fake news. Well, let me introduce you some tools for high school okay um this is classtools.net and they are they have this website which generates fake news well the purpose here is um you want this thing you produced to be shared or to be clicked to be talked about you just want this being shared by all your friends. So that's the strategy, that's the mentality you will be producing. Another one I like is this. There are lots of them, but these two are the most simple and straight to the idea. So what I want to play with you is, uh, we are going to generate fake news. And when we generate our fake news, uh, remember we have five categories of that. Joker, scammer, politician, conspiracy theorist, and insider. Try to produce one sample for each of these five categories. But now I am going to share these links with you in the chat section so that you will possess the same fake news generating tool. So let me copy the links. Here comes one. Second one, let me show you how these function. Again, share screen. Okay, um, I like this one very much. This is really cool. What you can do is, uh, I don't like CBC News, but let me change it with BBC News. So you can write anything. 
and you can change it. Oh, 2017, why? 2021. And place, let's make it NASA. We need this here, right? So you simply can change the information here wherever you want. But the problem is, um, this is not convincing enough. So um, I searched for another image that will accompany this, and I will place that one. So it looks like ZNS is giving this. Now, what you can do is you can download the image. So when you click, it just downloads. And same thing here. You can change. And then you can also introduce an image for that. So I like this one. So what you do is you search your image and you try to create your own fake news and um, in five categories, which I introduced you. And I'm going to make you in groups. Well, actually, uh, I planned you to be in groups, um, but my chat room opening and grouping option is not active. Well, maybe um, we should just let the um, let the students generate their own individual, and then if they if they like what they have, they can post it. Okay, okay. So uh, right now, since you have the links trying to generate your own fake news and i am here online to answer your questions if you have any questions or any detail you would like to know more about it um, so your purpose is to create a work a fake journalistic work so that everyone will share it and you can use the strategies which I just introduced you. Joker, uh, let, let me also just um, write these in the chat section. I, I put them in already, um, Dr. Oh, great. Oh, great. All right. So let's give you, I don't know, what do you say, Paula? How, how much time shall we give to these fake news producing journalists? <laughs> Uh, 50 seconds. <laughs> Something really fast, I think, like, you know, maybe a minute at the most. Okay, let's give a minute and let's see who is going to share first. Um, there is, a, can they file share? Let me ask that. Or can they screen share? Uh, they sh should be able to. Sorry, my dogs are barking. Let me mute myself.
Okay, so is everybody aware what they're doing? You're all on the link now, putting in your headlines and generating your fake news. The, the two links are right there in the chat. And then, uh, Emre, Emre, what do you want them, what do you want to see that they've produced? The whole story or the headline or what, what? Maybe they could do a screenshot. Screenshot will be fine. Um, in the end, the end product will be something like that. Let me share screen that one with you. This is one fake news which I produced and I downloaded to my laptop. Now I'm sharing the JPEG image with you. So the end product is going to be something like that. People would totally <laughs> believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably believe that. I could be quite gullible. <laughs> well, the reaction you give actually tells this is a fake news. You laughed, you smiled, you laughed. It's just, it is so crazy, so out of the mind that you know, it immediately reveals itself. But if you are with the idea of, you know, I should share this, I should just uh, get some attention with this, uh, I should just get some more clicks and likes with this, then probably, you would ignore the reaction you give. So that's how we spread fake news. So, so um, do you think that we should um, move forward and then let the students come back with what they created? afterwards or should we wait for them maybe if some if a student was to let us know are you working on it um yeah that's wait? another problem on the <laughs> online education you guys know, no, are you busy <laughs> so um would uh is there a, okay kasha says she is working on hers and so is alexis so um who, uh, so, I mean, what I could do is show that trailer I was going to, to show you uh, while we wait for the others. Of course, if you're busy making your, um, <laughs> if you're busy making your phone um, you're not going to watch it. Well, let, let, let's wait for another minute or so, so that they won't be confused with okay. producing and listening some information. Antonia says she's done. So Antonia. Wow, please go ahead, Antonia. I see it. I'm dying to see it. Can, are you a, Antonia, are you able to I'm share? trying to get it to, I'm on my phone. Oh. So give me one second, please. Sure. And the rest of you who are working on yours, figure out um, how are you going to either share it with us or screenshot it. And I believe in the chat you're able to upload a file. So you should be able to upload the screenshot. Jean, you're done. Are you able to share yours, Jean, while we wait on Antonia? Um, yeah, but I can't screenshot. I'm not sure how to upload it. Yeah, I'm not sure either. So if you could unlock the screen, so I can share my screen. Oh, all right. Um, hmm, Michelle Smith, are you here? I already made a cool host. Oh, she's right on the ball. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so Antonia and also Jean, you'd have to make Jean a co-host as well. Uh huh. Can you see it? Yeah. COVID-19 vaccine finger growth. <laughs> so what, they grow an extra finger? You grow an extra finger. You know, due to the COVID-19 vaccine, many people have experienced the side effect of an extra finger. <laughs> and uh, the way that the conspiracy theories are absolutely flying around, I'm sure that would take traction, eh? Exactly. 
Which strategy did you use? I, which you mean the link? No, uh, no, no, joker, scammer, politician, conspiracy theorist, insider. A conspiracy theorist. Okay. So you, you know, are a conspiracy the theorist. Side Good side job. Side. Very good job. Being a conspiracy theorist is an occupation by itself. People earn money out of that, just for your information. <laughs> so, Dr. Dr. I'll look into that. How do they make money out of it? So could you explain that briefly? Like, yes. How do they the idea is to create a click stream and likes. And Facebook pays you with likes and click streams. If you produce more of these, uh, it really turns into cash. But on the way, how many people are get harmed? You need to not care about it. You need to really oh, be now, you know, now we might have without just your created, spirit. We might have just <laughs> no soul, whole, no spirit, no we conscientious. Might created, we might have created a whole new industry now of young, of young conspiracy theorists all trying to make money. Well, the thing is, if they are here, probably they, uh, their mindset is already ethical enough to. Yes not to do that it's, okay. it's a totally different kind of personality we're talking about all right gene is, is sharing his screen now i think yeah ah, okay getting rid of brave plp welcome back christy would everyone believe that i think so what do you say uh dr yildrim um, I am wanting to know um, which strategy Gene used. Can you, can you identify which one is that? So Gene, oh. that's between oh, the political, the, the political one. Politician, okay. I would say both political one and insider. You're, you're giving a breaking news. You are the insider, you are special. Okay, and we have a, quite a few more students who are done as well. We have Marco Bain, Gillian Cooper. Um, let me ask, are any of the students who've done this from a high school? Oh, yep, yeah, that was the purpose. <laughs> <laughs> we are getting so fun that we forget it. Yeah. High so schoolers, dear, dear high schoolers, how are you? What's going on? Marco Bain, you're up next. Is Marco Bain a high schooler? <laughs> oh, right. Oh, I like that. Oh, they're getting a brutal fight. You could just see me and, and Dr. Yildrim eh, getting in. <laughs> well, it looks like a collegium, so probably teachers are having some kind of, you know, fight club or, you know, gladiator kind of thrill <laughs> in this setting. So what, what uh, function is that? Um, I use the conspiracy, um, the conspiracy function. And yes, ma'am, I am actually from high school. You are not, or you are? I am, I am from oh, high school. Which high school are you from then, Marco? TV Bethel. Thank you. Yay. We have our, our, we had our first uh, submission from a high school student. Very, very good. Very good. And what is that? Isn't that building from UB campus? Yes, ma'am. Thought I recognized. So it's us who's doing that. <laughs> it means us, basically, yes. Nothing personal, nothing personal. I just thought it would be, um, I thought it would be um, unreasonable. Yeah, I think so. I'm a curious. a bit of a joker as well. <laughs> I'm curious, did you get fun producing this? Um, producing fake news? Mm. Actually, no, because I would rather not um, make fake news because what's the point of it if it's just gonna, if it's just gonna bring negative side effects? Yeah. Um, another interesting thing is um, people get a pleasure when they produce fake news. Sometimes it's just a joke in between two people. Let's say, I re remember me doing this fake news about uh, students receiving uh, gold coins if they get A's in exams. 
Um, for me, this is something funny and I can share it with Paola. See, I made this. Well, you know, this is between me and Paola, but once it gets into a third person, it goes out of the context and it stops becoming a joke between me and my colleague. People start to share it and some of these people start believing it. So some fake news start with very good intentions with no harming intention. So we really should be careful what we share. It's just like driving responsibly. Yeah. So, um, Amre, um, now I'm conscious that we have our little student presentation coming up. So, but we still have four, three more students who haven't shown their their fake news. So, who's next, please? Um, we have now who who have we? Julian Cooper, Kiante, Roka. Although I think that she or he has left the room. Kasia Evans, Alicia Ray. Kasia Ray Evans. Yeah. She's co host Who else? Alicia Rene or Reen. I'm not sure how to say that. And Gillian Cooper. And also Brianna. Oh, I'm not sure if Bri Brianna was saying she was finished or not. She just wrote a letter S. So I'm not sure what that means. Okay, so that means they can now, so you all can, um, well, I guess individually share your screen. Um, one at a time, I have Kasha up next. Okay, Kasha then. Corona vaccine kills many. Doctors are saying many patients died after receiving COVID vaccine. This is, who is this, Kasha? Are you from UB or from a high school? Kasha? You can, ty you can type it if you're not able to unmute. Okay, we're not sure. <laughs> and Ray, did you want to discuss what she put? Well, that's a very good example. Of... I couldn't unmute while I was sharing. Hmm. Oh, that's good to know. Are you UB or high school? Yes, I'm UB. Okay. Well, that, that's a very dramatic example of um, insiders and conspiracy theorists. So when I see that, I feel very scared. But the thing is, in human brain, there's a very primitive part. It's called amygdala. It's the place which is responsible of fight or flight response. It's very primitive, but it keeps us survival. So for example, if you have a fire, you don't discuss, shall I break the window? Is it against the law or... Shall I be, you know, very gentle? You just fly away from the danger. So when you see such kind of fake news, the thing is, logic shuts down. When logic shuts down, there is no definition of right, wrong, or judgment. So that's the idea of producing fake news and making them very concerned you can direct them very easily. You can command them very easily when people are scared. And that was a very good example of scary news. All right, who's next? Could you please raise your hand? Gillian Cooper. I think Gillian's from UB. Am I right, Gillian? Yes, I am. I thought so. <laughs> okay, so um, I think you, um, Mrs. Smith is, is uh, allowing you to share your screen. Trying to find her first. 
Yeah, because some of them are not alphabetical in the list. She raised her hand, so she should be first one. Oh, I see her. Go ahead, Julian. That's, that looks like a few stories I've already read. <laughs> That's yeah. a common one. It is a common one, but I found it kind of funny because it was inside his presentation and I'm taking microbio this year and we sort of discussed that. Okay. People so, take this very serious, this 5G thing. Yeah. yeah. So th this is something, you know, you will find a very wide range of believers and followers, if you go with this. So let me ask a question, Emre. So do you think that um, what is dismissed as fake news is always fake news? That's a very generalized question. Um, we don't making a search, you cannot say it. Let's say that I received this news and I got really concerned about 5G and COVID relation. Well, what I should do is, I shouldn't share it immediately. I shouldn't talk about it immediately. What I should do is, well, let me go over this. I'm very disturbed about this one. I'm very concerned about this one. Let me see what's happening with this. Then I will immediately see lots of fake news and what, lots of information that these are fake news. So then this is, this is an indication that, you know, something is wrong with this kind of reporting. Mm. If it goes like this, um, let's say that a research institute claiming that, well, we find a relationship between these two, then I should be, oh gosh, you know, it looks serious. If I see more of that, if I see it on WHO, World Health Organization website, then I say, well, this is not fake, this is real. So if I see that news in real science, then I say, this is something yeah, different. and, and um, certainly, you know, like this past year, particularly, it's been more and more difficult to identify um, the, the way you can get, you know, the, to the truth of, a, of um, a story often. And I have spent many hours and days and sometimes weeks actually trying to research things that people I know are genuinely concerned about. And so, I, you know, and, and you find yourself going, deeper and deeper into research studies and science and uh somebody commented on a facebook um post i made when i when i in fact my it was a post about the social dilemma and somebody said but if we uh, if we have to become fact checkers ourselves we do nothing but fact check because there's the preponderance of fake news is so intense out there so you know it, it it, it sometimes isn't as easy as just going to a fact checker site. That's right. For this reason, there are some organizations which produce fact check algorithm and programs. Yeah. UK is specifically successful on that. They have this, I forgot the name of the group, but there are certain groups which fact check officials talking live, what happens is when you claim something, you know, this is happening and affecting this many people, the moment you say, at that very moment, they check all government statistics institutes and websites and see if the data is correct or not in right. real time. Um, these are limited, but until this becomes something daily routine in our news reading and receiving life, I think we need to be researchers. We do, we do. 
Um, okay, so should we be moving on? Um, it's now uh, 3.08. Thank you, Barbara. That was absolutely amazing. I feel like mm. we've all learned a lot in uh, from your presentation. Thank you. Um, so what I wanted to ask everyone, and particularly now I know my RUB students are going to know the answer. Okay, so let me ask the high school students in the room. Do you all know what propaganda is? First of all, and do you think there's any difference between fake news and propaganda? Does anybody have an answer to that from a high school? So I'm asking for um, who am I? Uh, St. John's, uh, uh, St. Augustine's, and I believe the other school was CC Sweeting? CV Bethel, sorry. Does anybody know what the difference is or is there a difference? Is it the same um, thing? I think there's like a very thin line of a difference between propaganda and fake news. And what would propaganda the propaganda is more of like a biased opinion on most things, on most parts, where fake news you can tell in the name it's fake. So Okay, so fake. so propaganda is a biased opinion. That's that's the definition I'm hearing, correct? Opinion, information, okay. or on that line, yes, ma'am. So bias, okay, definitely bias is in there. Uh, anybody else want to give me a, 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 a diff an idea of the difference? Is there a difference? Okay, let me, uh, I just prepared this little short video <laughs> that um, I think would explain it better than me just saying it. So it's only, I think, a couple of minutes long. And then I'm going to go back and ask, there's going to be some questions in the video that I'm going to uh, play through and then come back and ask the same questions again after you've watched to see if you can give me the answers. Okay, sorry, I just need to share my screen. Uh, give me one second. Oh, the host uh, has disabled screen sharing. So, um, Michelle, are you still there? I think she's saying that she has stepped away from her desk. Uh, Michelle, are you there? Uh, Paula, can you send the link via I think I'm sharing now. I think I've got it. Okay, so can you, you see? You are. You can see this picture, right? Okay, so I am going to go ahead and play this video. Sorry, it, uh, the sound is off, so let me just go back. Start again.
Okay, so that was my little presentation there. And I just wanted to go back now and ask the questions that I asked on here. So is propaganda just bias? Let me uh, end the, the full screen effect. So what do you think? Is it just bias or is it something more than bias? Looking for some responses. I'd say it is biased towards the person who is um, sharing the propaganda so that you can follow their aim and their goal, um, what they're trying to promote. So how does that make it different from fake news then? Fake news is normally just to make money or to um, share information that's not true. It's not really to make you follow a goal or a person. Emre, would you agree with that? I would say yes. It's more um, consuming it very quickly that day, that very time. But propaganda has longer impact than that. Yes, it tends to be systematic and over a period of time because somebody has a very definite result that they want. And that doesn't happen just with one viral message. It happens over a period of time. So the next question on here was, is fake news the same? So what is the difference between the two? Um, and I think we just had a definition as to that. So what about um, the hope poster? I'm not even sure that Obama himself produced this poster, but we're just using it as an example. So this hope poster, is that fake news? So we just want a, uh, a quick yes or no. <laughs> Bethany, what are you saying? I, I'm just saying that that photo is not, um, it's just a photo, it's not propaganda or fake news. Well, it isn't fake saying, news. It's saying hope on there. You've got Obama's face and it says hope. So is that fake news? No. No. It's not lying about anything, right? But is it propaganda then? So, it may play some role with propaganda. Yes. Yeah, so let's uh, it let's definitely is a fake news. Let's see the next slide. Well, here's why it's not fake news because Fake news is when something is not true. It's misinformation and disinformation. And it is not true to say that Obama didn't give hope. He did give hope to a lot of people. So that was actually true. It's designed to make you believe something. Well, his, um, that hope poster is designed to make you believe something, but because it's true, it can't be fake news. And it's not clickbait because, uh, well, I guess it could be if people were sharing it, but not under the definition of what fake news is. So, but what about propaganda then? Well, they want you to believe, they want you to feel something. And um, that is a, a clear sign of propaganda is when they appeal to your emotions and you're made to feel a certain way that may actually have nothing to do with the truth. You know, um, the hope that you feel may have been displaced or misplaced. It's not necessarily um, true that people who thought they could hope were, felt that they got what they wanted but because it is making you feel that way it's therefore propaganda because it's designed to for a purpose and the purpose is to get votes right for that person so what is propaganda it's what somebody in a position of power is deliberately doing with the information so that you think a certain way so that you feel certain emotions and so that you act. And it might simply be that you buy something because all advertising in a sense is propaganda. In fact, the word PR, public relations, originally uh, the very first PR company um, by, by Edward Bernays in America was actually called propaganda. And he decided that the word was too negative. And so he came up with PR, which is public relations. So it's not always negative, but it is always done for a reason. So it could be a positive reason. So I wanted you to think of some examples. 
of um, positive propaganda. So can anyone come up with examples of how you have someone in power who's disseminating propaganda so that you act, um, feel and behave a certain way? How could it be a good thing? So Aaron, sorry, say that again. I was asking if said religion be a form of propaganda, like when persons go around and they post them photos of the cross. Okay, now I'm having a problem hearing you. So you said could what be um, a form of propaganda? Religion. Religion. Well, actually, the very first use of the word propaganda was by the Catholic religion. Um, and it was the propaganda of the faith, I think was the name of the leaflets that they first came out with. Uh, or the propagation, sorry, of the faith, and it was to spread the the um, Catholic faith all through the world. And so they would definitely have seen that as a good thing, as a positive thing, so they could get everybody on the same page to think the same way. Is all PR propaganda? Yes, I would say it is, because it's all designed to make you feel, act, or do something. Is it negative propaganda? No, because not all propaganda is negative. So let's just go back. Um, other examples. What about education? Could education be a form of propaganda? Somebody's saying yes. I think so too. My answer is yes. <laughs> and why would you say yes to that? Because they try to make things famous, but you have to have an application to be successful. Or well, that's something, that. that's actually something else you're talking about there. That's actually, when you say they, who is the they? So by I mean, they, like, the I government? I could be more specific. I mean, like persons who have authority within the school who actually benefit from uh, the Uh-huh. What about subjects, you know, like for instance, um, you know, certain subjects are taught a certain way. History. Uh, yes, history has been said to be a, a kind of propaganda because you, uh, isn't there a saying that history is told by the victor? Yeah, you're But, right. Right, so uh, well, let me get back to the, uh, what other examples could we have? What about the pandemic? We, we all need to be um, following the rules, right? We need to be social distancing. We need to be wearing masks. Um, all of the other things that they're trying to persuade us to do. Isn't that a propaganda campaign? Professor Alvino, I have a... Yeah. a Go ahead, Jean. An example which goes exactly with what you're saying now. Um, there are some people who... Well, there's one person in particular. I can't remember his name, so I, I mean, I'm mad that I can't. But he... he he hypothesized that the entire school system that we kind of have now, it doesn't really prepare people for the things that we are doing in this day and time. And he was like, it's pretty much, it was pretty much a system for, you know, people to be programmed to, to work in the factory for your eight hours. Don't ask too many questions, do what, do what you're told and yeah. be happy yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, Yes. And we're talking about the masks and all of that stuff and how we were, you know, this is like the third wave of programming where we were forced to give up all of our, our norms and be confined to our houses. Like you, even if you wanted to, you, it's now against the, the law to do what was normal last March. You go outside to the pump, you go outside to talk to somebody and you're arrested. So I don't know. I But wouldn't you say, Jean, that though that um, the powers that be that are disseminating the propaganda would argue that it's for a very important reason, um, you know, in terms of the health of the public? Yeah, they, they very well may do that. However, one thing I learned, and this wasn't even in, 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 in media, this was in music. Um, when they did, when they started doing the first plays, Um, there was a person who was responsible for building all of the mechanism of how the stage changed and how people came flying down from the roof, from the ceiling, and like everything just changed automatically. And the, the phrase goes, the entire world is a stage. So 
we won't ever really know the mechanisms behind a lot of the things. We only left to, uh, you know, go after the conspiracy theories and just think about these things. But we won't, we, I don't think most of us will ever really know why a lot of things happen. Well, science tends to reveal a lot, right? Um, and I noticed Cameron has her hand up, so, or his hand up, I can't see. Cameron? Good day. Um, I'm not sure if anyone mentioned this after I replied yes to you, but I do see school as a sort of propaganda because of indoct indoctrination. Indoctrination. Uh, they kind of give textbooks mostly give one part of an argument, right? Without question. And I mean, before nobody really had the what can I say maturity to question things that they were being taught. But as technology and generations advance, scholars begin to question what they're being taught or whatever. So you're all um, get more educated as you're on. Yes, ma'am. But with, with with most textbooks, they give you one part of the story, yeah, and disagrees with the next part without explaining both parts to give you an opportunity to agree or disagree. Okay, now I feel like I've opened a can of worms here with this education as propaganda. <laughs> I'm ready. You have a comment on that. Maybe we should close this can of worms and get on with the next part. Um, well, I, I like to think that, uh, you know, that, that's a very interesting suggestion, education being propaganda. But education has biases. Yes. But I don't think that we can label entire education as a propaganda. But um, it still depends on how much bias there is inside. If, um, if there is a limit, it passes then I think it becomes propaganda. But I feel like we should leave that topic <laughs> right yeah, now and uh, move on because um, I, I see that it's 3.25 and um, I really wanted to give a short presentation on um, propaganda that I think is important for us to realize that we could be subjected to. But I'm also conscious that we have um, Charles and Chico in the room um and i don't want them to have been here for nothing um so and obviously we're not going to have time to play the movie that i wanted to play i think um so i guess what i'll do is i'll play my presentation and then i'll i'll hand over to chico and charles and we can end the session with them because they're going to be showing you a couple of adverts and asking you a couple of questions so let me without further ado go on to the next video which is this one. Oh, you need to share your screen. Oh, because, okay, thank you, Emre. Thank you for telling me because uh, sometimes I go for 10 minutes and people don't tell me. <laughs> All right. I'm sharing my screen now to start again. Well, a 40-foot Haitian vessel landed in the Moxo Road area early this morning, and officers from several uniformed branches quickly acted to capture as many as they could. Several of those migrants who they traveled with from Haiti paid someone a certain fee to take them to a village on the island. Those five males were taken on the back of a flatbed truck. All appeared to be in good physical condition. These exercises are far reaching and they are very expensive. You spend thousands and thousands of dollars before the ship even leaves the harbor. Where in this house, police officers found what is believed to be a more illegal.
The Royal Bahamas Defense Force captured more than 100 Haitian migrants off of Exuma. The migrants were apprehended this morning with more set to arrive in the capital. Officers are being sure to keep some distance between the media and the migrants as there are some fears that some of those migrants may be some of those escaped prisoners. The 87 males, 24 females, and three children joined 113 immigrants sent back on Saturday. That group included 108 males, four females, and a child. Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell says government is looking to conclude a Bahamas-Haiti accord, which may help stem the seemingly unending flow of illegal migrants from Haiti to the Bahamas. So uh, let me get some thoughts on that. I mean, there are some who could accuse me of a type of propaganda with that video. What were your thoughts having watched that? Jean, you're saying many won't want to have this conversation. Why do you say that? Because, I mean, it is what it is. Um, we live in a society we do. And I, I point it out all the time. Um, you know, it's kind of weird that people would have gone through a process where their ancestors would have faced slavery and colonization, but there seems to be some, I don't, I don't even know what to call it. it, it I, there's a, there's a, a, a sense of xenophobia in there, a mm -hmm. sense of, of hate for people who really and truly are distant cousins of yours. If you, I mean, if we look at it, as, as as history lays it out, we just were, you know, boat rides separated and dropped off in different um, regions of the Caribbean. I don't know. But it's funny, I actually use this. We had a, a, um, a class on this in um, media theory and analysis just before this. And this was the, the, um, the example that I used. So it was kind of funny to see that laid out. I, I would really love this um, presentation, side note, Mitchell. You'd really love this presentation what? No, I'm saying I would, li I would like a copy of it. I like to oh, get I see. It. Yeah, I probably am going to put it in, um, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so uh, how does it relate to what we're talking about? Because not all information um, coming from the media, it, how do I phrase, how do I put this? is uh help me out emery what am i trying to say here i'm not you see zns is doing a job right they're reporting on a problem which is the immigration problem and there's a certain way it, with news that you are constrained by you have to present the news as it is which is you have all of these illegal immigrants however when you get nothing but that so i did a um at the time i was doing a study of representation of haitians and um, I, I looked at something like two years worth of ZNS news reports and of a hundred stories, 
something like 90 of them were purely along the lines of what you saw. There was nothing else but that. No stories about positive things Haitians had done in the community or anything. And then, of course, um, the government shortly after that produced this new policy, which was very tough um, in terms of uh, the way they clamped down on immigration, came in for a lot of international criticism. So it makes you wonder if ZNS is the mouthpiece of the government, was that, you know, was there some purpose to it? I would say the real problem is journalists need to make lots of decisions very quickly. Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't matter how much ethical background you have, you have a story and you have to grab it, finish it and just prepare it ready for the next uh, next news hour. And at the same time, it has to be something consumable within the society. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have all these people lining up here, and if you start showing images that would question how we treat these people, how we do something, then it will cause some kind of controversial. And uh, you want your news to be up there and smoothly consumed. So are you going to challenge anything? Or are you going to just support what is the initial belief is? Do you so, mean the belief of, of society and culture? Yes, yes. The, the, so the, we're, we're, we're supporting the dominant ideology and maintaining the status quo in the media. I would say that's the safest thing to do if you want to smoothly continue your job. Um, so it's a very, very personal decision. I'm sure those people who are filming these feel awkward. You know, people are just hurdled at the back of a truck mm -hmm. and you're referring them like cattle. Yeah. Definitely something just, you know, spikes up. But are you going to follow that disturbing feeling, disturbing sensation to your fellow human being? Or are you just simply ignore it yeah. and yeah. save the day? So it becomes a very personal decision. So uh, the other thing I'd wanted to show, which we don't have time for, unfortunately, um, unless people wanted to stay on, was the opposite side of the coin, where the media can actually help to, um, to raise awareness and to show the other side of the story. And so that's what um, the, the short film I was going to show was Passage by Kareem Mortimer, where he actually looks at the, the, the plight of Haitians who come over here, what they go through to come. And, um, you know, not so much the reasons why, but just the, the, the journey it involves, you know. And, and if, if, they go, if they choose to go through that journey, things must be very bad where they're coming from. So there's a reason for them coming here uh, but we don't really have time for that so I think um, we we need to press on and move on to uh, the presentation by Chico and Charles if you're both still here uh, yeah. yes <laughs> okay so just to introduce that uh, these two are uh, UB students they're in my COM 150 class and we just uh, finished doing propaganda a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was. And uh, so they were, I just wanted to, because this is for our high school students to get a taste of UB. So I wanted you to sort of interact with two of our students and um, see what they, what they have to say about propaganda. And let me just unshare my screen. Thank you, um, Emery. I think I stopped now. Okay, so you can go ahead Chico and share yours. Okay, um, good afternoon everybody. My name is Chico Farrington and today we will be presenting on propaganda, me, myself and Charles. Good afternoon everybody. 
Propaganda. Brace yourselves, the propaganda is coming. The first question we'll ask is what is propaganda? And in this day and age, what anybody would do with, they don't know anything, they'll Google it. <laughs> propaganda, as Google states, is information especially biased or misleading of a biased or misleading nature. And it's used to promote a political cause or a point of view. It's basically saying that what propaganda does and what it is, is it's someone's opinion or it's, it's the viewpoint of- We lost you, Chito. Pardon? Hello? Yeah, you're back. Okay, sorry. Uh, what it's saying is propaganda is basically just the viewpoint of the presenter. It's their biased opinion be that something political or something a fact, uh, it's something that they're presenting to you. And it's coming based off their viewpoints, anything that they feel and how they want you to feel about it. Um, but in regards to propaganda, it's not necessarily as what we just discussed in terms of fake news, propaganda actually has a few techniques to it. Of, and today in this day and age, we can say memes are basically the propaganda of today. They're the modern day style of propaganda that is used to reach the youths or just the new generation of people that, that is more accessible as in terms of it's not to say a poster as with propaganda used to be a poster or an ad that would be posted in the radio or on a television show. So a lot of people think that propaganda, the mass media and the government are all in cahoots and they're all just the same thing. It, so that's why you have a lot of things where conspiracy theorists, um, they tend to say just about everything is propaganda. That's all they believe. So in terms of the techniques of propaganda, we have quite a few. We have weasel words, name calling, plain folks, testimonials, Littering, generalizations, bandwagon, appeal to emotion, transfer. There are multiple ones more than this, and we will only get into four of them. The first being appeal to emotion. Okay, so appeal to emotion. So this is a technique that we all should be familiar with, but um, we're just doing this presentation to help you guys identify it. So this technique focuses on manipulating the emotions of viewers in order to achieve what they want, and they being the propagandists. So they employ music, pictures, and tone of voice in order to contribute in provoking an emotional response in their viewers. And of course, video as well. So I'm pretty sure uh, many of you have seen commercials like with the animals or with the starving children and then you know, they play this very sad music. You see the children, like the one in the background, looking very hungry and, you know, distressed. So all of this is in, um, in an attempt to get you to make um, monetary contributions toward the cause that they have in mind. And also, um, with appeal to emotion, with propaganda, it's not necessarily for a bad reason. So whatever it is that they're trying to achieve, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad reason. Um, and also with appeal to emotion, often you'd wonder like why you did that later, because obviously emotions interfere with your logic. So let's say for example, if they make um, the opportunity available where you could contribute, let's say $100 or $200 or any extreme amount, and you know you may have a responsibility that you have to live up to, but just because of your um, emotions and you're in that moment, you would decide to say, okay, well they probably need it more, and I'll just make up for it later. But then afterwards, you know you're stressed out, thinking that you know you don't know where you're gonna replace that money from. So that's appeal to emotion. Here we have patriotism. Patriotism is basically the, the, patriotism is an appeal to your patriotic sense. It's when you hear terms like, oh, you're not behaving if you don't do X, Y, and Z, or say, click, 
Kalek is most notably known as the bear of the Bahamas. Um, so one bear in particular being known as the bear of the Bahamas. So if you're a Bahamian, you gotta have a click, you gotta grab a few carwells. Here we're gonna have an example of an ad used by Kalik and they appeal to the patriotism of Bahamians. Um, we all know that Bahamians and Junkanoo, that's a big event. And here we have an ad where it's using Junkanoo and everyone's just interested, okay, this is Junkanoo, this is what it means to be Bahamian, but it's a commercial for Kalik. Yeah, I don't know if you could hear what they even said in the lyrics, Kalik is Bahamian like John Canoe. So it's really appealing to that patriotic sense that we all have. And another thing with that too, it kind of ties into bandwagon, although we don't have bandwagon today, but bandwagon is where um, everybody wants to be a part of certain groups. So because we all identify as Bahamians, we'd all want to partake in drinking Kaliks. And let's not talk about whether Kalik actually is Bahamian. <laughs> <laughs> That's another topic. Next, we have glittering words, well, glittering general generalities. In the Bahamas today, this is most notable in uh, politics. Pro uh, propaganda is pretty much, whenever you hear the word propaganda, you probably would end up thinking, okay, politics or something along those lines. Um, politics usually use these words like, um, for example, as you see momentarily, it's the people's time. Um, glittering words or glittering generalities, these use words that are, they sound grandiose, they sound big and they're pretty, but they're all fluff. They, they have no sustenance. You can be, it can be interpreted a numerous amount of ways. Um, and here's the ad from uh, now Prime Minister. So. It was very successful on his part. I don't know what's going on with the sound, Chico, but I can't, we can't hear that. You can turn it up a little bit, Chico. Chico, um, can you stop your share screen and re- share your share screen by clicking share sound button probably that's the problem uh, did the did the sound not play it played the sound very was well. very faint okay um i'll play it one more time So I think it's because you didn't check share sound option when you are sharing your screen. Stop sharing your screen. And when you reshare, check share sound option. Okay. There's a little box to click. Maybe we yes. should move on from that advert. <laughs> I okay. think, um, all right, all right. <laughs> I think we could probably get, get the point with that one. Yeah. So with that, they just, they say um, things that sound very, very good on paper, but in actuality, there's no substance in those words. Uh, in the next slide, we have um, one of our most famous characters here in the Bahamas, the singing bishop, uh, Lawrence Rule. Um, here he's giving 
one of his testimonies in terms of Bamboo Shop, one of our great restaurants. I hope the sound plays for this one a little bit better. Okay, we're not hearing anything for this one. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll act it out for you. Basically, he was describing how wonderful this bamboo shark that he has taste. And this is their Valentine's, well, as he called it, their Valentine's special. Um, this is a testimonial. It's a type of technique used in propaganda where they have a famous person or a figure that people can identify with and they promote a product and they give their testimony on how they feel about the product in order to get people to buy it. So I want to ask you guys, what do you think are ways in which these forms and these techniques of propaganda are used here today in the Bahamas? Uh, we have weasel words, name calling, and I want you to use your interpretation from what you think it means and to give an example of that. You just chime in or just type it in the chat. I think um, a lot of the times we use the bandwagon. Can you yeah, give me a is a good one. Um, because I feel like, like like it covers so many of the other ones. Like you said, the patriotism um bandwagon can be seen in that one. And I think within the testimonial bandwagon can be seen in that one as well. Um, so I just think we want to hop on the train that we see the famous people doing, you know. Okay. Anybody else? There's no wrong answer. You're seeing what it feels like to be a lecturer, Chico. <laughs> you <ask> question. <laughs> I'm hoping there's someone like me in the class. <laughs> I know. You're I, feel like, I feel like appeal to emotion is a big one because, especially in the Bahamas, Bahamas are a little prideful. So they appeal to their pride to make them do something. And then, yes, with a lot of charities, they appeal to sadness and a lot of advertisements, they appeal to, for some of them, their sexual appeal, for some of them, they make you think that you need this to be happy. So I think emotional appeal is huge. Yeah, appeal to right. emotion is a big one because, um, you know, oftentimes, as um, Ms. Christie said earlier, um, when they're advertising, when persons are advertising their products and whatnot, often they appeal to emotion. So like with the, you know, with the designer brands and, you know, with the fancy stuff, all of that appeals to, you know, how positive you'd feel if you wish to purchase it. Also that, um, yeah, appeal to emotion, like I said. Uh, I'll give you guys an example that um, everybody is probably seeing a thousand times and it's very irritating. When you go on YouTube, and you're watching your videos and it's all, all of a sudden my grandparents were subsistence farmers. Uh, everyone has heard that ad um, by Brave Davis that comes on and he's trying to appeal to your emotion in terms of telling you where his family came from and what all they were doing. That is propaganda in itself. Uh, now we also have one where I think it's from the f and government in terms of how they're attacking the PLP but these are all forms of propaganda in terms of every one of these techniques can come together and be joined to make what is propaganda. Yeah, a lot of them cross over as well. And so there's more than one in a lot of, um, a lot of messages and um, adverts. But um, I think we could, uh, we could end that there. So I want to thank you so much, Chico and Charles, for giving us a little taster there. Um, I hope our high school um, students enjoyed the presentations. And um, let me just ask if any of the high school students um, have any questions, whether, whether it be about the presentations or about coming to UB in general. 
you've got all of these UB students in the room right now that you could um, use, you know, to ask your questions of. So please do take advantage of that, them if you feel like right now. Um, if you want to ask something, put your hand up or you can just unmute. Okay, so otherwise, uh, if nobody would like to say anything further, I guess we could um, end the presentation there. Amre, I don't know if you wanted to say anything in closing. No, no, I'm fine. Yeah, it was a pleasure to see all these people and to talk to them. Yeah, so thank you everybody for coming. Um, let me uh, put my email address in here, um, just in case any of the high school students want further information, maybe on studying um, journalism at UB. So pala.alvino at, uh, sorry, wait a minute, I've got to do this to everyone. Uh, hold on. Okay, you should be able to see that now. paola.alvino at ub.edu.bs. So if you have questions about the program or about UB in general, please do email me. Um, and uh, thank you so much for coming. And thank you to Dr. Emre Yildrum for an amazing presentation on fake news. My thank pleasure. you very much.